Hello. My name is Miles. My dad used to call me 1.6. Is it 1.6 kilometers to a mile? No Tell you a bit about myself. I'm a lawyer. Not a very good one, let's be honest. My mate Rick has been ringing for the last six months every week, talking to the secretaries. Can I speak to the best criminal lawyer, best employment lawyer, best family lawyer? Every, something different every time he rings. Never been put through to me. There's only two lawyers there. There's a 15 year old work experience kid who takes more calls than I do. There's a fish out the back, I swear he's taking more inquiries than me. I mean, he can talk. He's got a special phone that goes down into his tank, but he's had no legal training. I'm going to tell you a story about the law from the law. The story of Wengi Brown. She was a client of mine. Wengi, she came into the office. She said, my name's Wengi. I said, that's good. Whenever I saw her, I was like, hey, Wengi, how are you, Wengi? Nice day today, Wengi. She ring, hey, Wengi. Send her a letter, dear Wengi. Six, six months passed, the matter settled. I ring up one of her doctors. I said, is there any outstanding invoices for Wengi Brown? He said, no Wengi Brown here. He said, Wengi Brown, the old guy, broke her arm. I said, no, no, that's Wendy Brown. She had tongue cancer. Had to have half a tongue removed. Oh, poor Wengi. That was for, for a while, I was a little angry. For a while, I was a little upset with Wengi, and in my head, I was like, Wengi, you should have told me. It's not Wendy, it's Wendy. <laughs> now, telling you that story is a breach of solicitor client privilege, which could have me struck off. But if I had to choose between telling that story and practicing as a solicitor, there's only one answer, and it's called W E N G Y. And Wendy was her name, oh! Um, what am I going to say now? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wengi, I'll go on to names. Names are funny, you're given a name as a kid, it affects your entire life. My name's Miles, not a bad name. A surname like Hunter could have been much worse. <laughs> like Mike or Gerald, for example. Um, and anyway, my, my good mate, he had a kid recently. He was about to call it an old family name, Francis, which is all right. And right at the last moment, he called it Jones. Now I look at the kid, I'm like, what a fucking cool kid. Whereas Francis, I was thinking he was going to be a dentist. <laughs> Jones is going to be a blues musician. Or blues or man Jones. With blues in his fingers and blues in his toes. Blues all the way down to his toes. Sold his soul to the devil. Mud to bed to he sold his soul in muddy waters. On the crossroads of Mississippi. Muddy waters sold his soul to the devil. So he, why? Incident sold his soul to the devil. Anyway, enough about Bones, the blues man Jones. I want to talk about names. Like, your, your parents can give you a name and it can affect your entire life. You know, that's why I think when you're about 14, you should be able to choose if you want to accept the parent, name your parents gave you or go for something new. A bit like when Chinese migrants come to Australia and they get to choose an Anglo version of their name, you know? The men have been watching way too much Pride and Prejudice. They've all got names like Elton and Wesley <laughs> and Frederick. The girls like positive human emotions, like happy, joy, and hope. <laughs> the sort of hope that I come across someone going for a negative human emotion, like sad, depressed, or jealous. <laughs> or just something neutral, like surprise or mild enthusiasm. <laughs> when I was a kid at school, we all had, uh, you know, we all had biblical names, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and all that stuff. These days you go to a classroom, all sorts of names, Hippie, Ocean, Rocky, Jamaica, iPod, Truck, Gravel, <laughs> Sand and Cement, whatever you like, Gary. <laughs> Everything but Adolf. That went out in the 40s. I'm a forgiving guy, but that's his third black mark, war, genocide, and destroying a perfect good man. <laughs> you know, I even found out that there was a, a name that's taken off in, the, in places called Ladasha. It's got L A dash A, like la. La. You pronounce the dash, la dasha. And I was like, fuck, imagine what you can do. You can use punctuation marks in your name. If you want to call your kid Comet, you don't have to do C O W M E T, just Comet T. Johnny, full stop. Not the traditional Johnny, full stop, three words. Just go Johnny, full stop. I reckon they should have the la dasha rule, birth, death, and marriages. You turn up, you say, I want to register my name. My kid's name, Ladasha. They're like, Docs. <laughs> <laughs> it's an automatic, automatic takeaway the kids. 
Ich bin gerade auf. You know when a racing guy, they do a car driver dies at the track and they're like, at least he died doing what he loved? I think they should say that when someone dies of a drug overdose. <laughs> Jimmy the Smackhead dies, jumped, as Jimmy the Smackhead dies from a bad batch of heroin at his funeral, they're like, Jimmy was a good man. He died young, but we should take solace from the fact that Jimmy died doing what he loved. Because Jimmy loved heroin. <laughs> it was his favourite thing, he did it every day. It was like he was addicted. <laughs> I believe in legalisation, we could tax drugs, we could save money on the criminalisation of it, and we could even save lives like Jimmy the Smackhead. <laughs> Vote for me tomorrow in the election of you. <laughs> Reform vote one. Anyway. In the Senate. 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 And you know, they say, you know, they say, uh, you know, cannabis is a is a gateway drug. You smoke a joint, then you smoke two. Before you know it, you haven't speed and pingers, and then one day you wake up on the street and you've got a bloody <laughs> needle hanging out your arm. <laughs> You sit there smacked out with Jimmy the Smackhead. <laughs> you don't know what's happened. Well, I say gates. Uh, so I say grapes are a gateway fruit. <laughs> <laughs> You're at the supermarket. You see a grape. <laughs> Think should I steal that one? No, 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 it's not allowed. So you pinch it, eat it, walk on. The next day you're at the supermarket, you steal two. Then a sack of oranges. Then you're robbing fruit and veg trucks. Then one day you wake up in the street, you don't know what's happened. You're just lying there, mango skins all over. Passion fruit stuck to your eyes. Um, I believe, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of alcohol. I'm not here on the prohibition rage. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do comedy without a bit of alcohol, let's be honest. But it's hard to disagree with the fact that alcohol's involved in a lot of accidents and assaults. Whereas, the hallucinogens, the worst that happens is a bit of temporary psychosis. <laughs> By the time I was in uh, uh, Cambodia, right, I was traveling with a girl and we just had a happy pizza. Three types of ash, ash, cannabis, oil and uh, marijuana. It's very strong. Now we're up there, I started getting the, the, the fears. I thought she, I was vomiting in the toilet, I thought she'd poisoned me, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then the room started shaking, I was like, fuck, I gotta get out of here. So I was like, Ruth, I'm getting out of here, it's fucking, there's an earthquake. So she stayed, she, she stayed, I thought she just was feeling guilty about trying to poison me, right? <laughs> so I run out down the stairs, yelling, four flights of stairs, yelling at everyone, knocking on every door, earthquake, get out, get out! <laughs> Mom came out, I ran down, all the way down to the bottom. Where I was at 4 a.m. in the Phnom Penh, naked, in the middle of the night, and I realised it was all in my head. <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you from one pizza story to another. I was having a pizza recently in the inner city at a trendy pizza bar, and I looked at the menu, and there was all these pizzas I'd never heard of, no traditional pizzas. I didn't know what to order. So the, the waiter comes over, and I'm like, where's your traditional pizzas? Where's the humble supreme? He says, and it's just what's on the menu. He said, what? He said, there's nothing there. Like. He said, well, tell me, tell me what you want. I said, well, I'll tell you what I don't want. <laughs> and I'll tell you in song. <laughs> if a bottles and quacks, put it back. Rosemary and thyme, not on mine. Is that egg? Don't pull my leg. Rocket and feta, you could do better. Pumpkin, potato, just say no. <laughs> Bean sprouts and eggplant, you can't, you shan't. <laughs> and if by chance it makes another meal, no deal. <laughs> so, so, you know, he goes, how about a ham and pineapple? He said, it sounds fine. He goes, oh, we don't do pineapple, it's not traditional. So I punched him in the head. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't punch him, I kneaded him into dough. I put mozzarella and tomato and then butter chicken and bean sprouts and eggplants and all these things as you never go on a pizza and feta and duck and all that and I chucked him into a pizza oven and I cooked him <laughs> and then I went to eat him but he was disgusting because he had all this shit that you never go on a pizza throw, threw him in the bin. <laughs> so what's the lesson now? You never can do a pizza restaurant. Have a traditional pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be in a band called Sweet Not Salon. I was the drummer. To totally tone deaf, which is not very good for being a drummer. Anyway, I used to just remember the drum beat off by heart. 
till we finish it, I can't just remember what I was going to play, and then I'd see the band finish and I'd just smash the cymbal. <laughs> One time I wasn't concentrating because the band finished and I was still playing. And then I looked and they're looking at me and I'm playing. And the crowd's looking at me and I'm playing. I'm like, fuck, we're fucked here, we're going to do something big. <laughs> finish. So I smashed the cymbals really hard and then I chucked both sticks into the audience. Like a professional. Unlike a professional, I didn't have a spare pair of sticks. So before we did the next song, I had to get off the stick. We were all going to try and find the sticks. It's safe to say that was my last gig. I turned up to practice. I turned up to practice, turned up to practice the next week and there was another guy there. I turned to the bass player and I said, oh, who's that? And he goes, oh, the new drummer. <laughs> so there's exciting two drummers. <laughs> he shook his head and said, no, no, just one. <laughs> um, I love stories. Always have ever since I was a kid. I love the uh, story of the Pied Piper until I realised he was just a massive pedophile. <laughs> Um, I liked uh, Charlotte's Web is another one I liked. You know, the one of the spider who kindly spider named Charlotte is, and the pig who finds out he's being eaten. And the spider decides to write things in the web to describe the pig. Amazing, brilliant, what a pig. The farmer comes down, and sees the web, is like, yeah, brilliant, what a pig, we saved you. Amazing. Hey, fuck that up. It's not an amazing bloody pig at all, it's an amazing spider. <laughs> he's writing in a web, perfect English, no formal education. <laughs> The spider. I think they should get, uh, send the spider off to university to study the classics and roast the pig up and celebrate. <laughs> Maybe the spider could write a book. Just write the pig right out of it. The amazing spider. He writes in its own web. Anyway, um, another uh, story I like was the uh, Billy Goat's Gruff. Do you remember that one? Yeah. yeah. Three goats who uh, run out of food. Three brothers. And as they hear about this mountain full of food, just like luscious grass. That are, you know, goat's paradise. Um, the problem is there's only one bridge to get to that mountain. And under that bridge lives a troll. Yeah. It's a troll, he's got eyes as big as a sauce, saucepans and nose as big as a broomstick. We don't have a backstory on the troll, but he lives under a bridge, so I'm guessing he's over. <laughs> he's got eyes as big as a saucepan, so I'm guessing he's got some sort of amphetamine addiction. <laughs> anyway, they send the first goat over the little one, the little brother, he turns up, clops over the bridge. The troll jumps out and goes, I want to eat you all up. The little goat says, don't eat me, eat my brother, he's bigger. At which point the troll just lets him through. I mean, he could have just eaten him and seen if he was still hungry, but no, he lets him through. <laughs> second, second goat, middle one comes on, same thing, I want to eat you up, don't eat me, my brother, lets him through. At this point I'm thinking, fuck it, this, this troll doesn't want to eat these goats. He's just a fucking deluded hobo shouting whatever's coming into his head. <laughs> Finally, the big goat comes along, tosses the, the troll off the bridge to his death at the bottom of the river. And what's the lesson there? If you're in trouble, get your bigger brother to deal with it. And all homeless or psychologically deranged should be killed in a horribly ironic way. <laughs> I.e. thrown off the very same bridge on which you reside. Uh, but it got me started thinking about fairy tales and the meanings of fairy tales. And you know, a lot of fairy tales teach us that the hero is beautiful and the villain's ugly and it's superficial. You know, I like to change them up a bit. Give Cinderella leprosy. <laughs> and despite the disability and disfigurement, she live, uh, the handsome prince falls in love with her and they live happily ever after. It's about 38 days because she got leprosy. <laughs> Um, another one, the ugly duckling. Ugly duckling, no one likes it, turns into a beautiful swan, everybody likes it. What's the lesson there? Never was a duckling for a start. It was a baby swan or a cigna. <laughs> and beauty and popularity are intricately linked. I'd like to change that one up, modernise a bit. They're all bought by a Chinese restaurant. The ducks are just quickly put through the mince and turned into peaking duck. The, the swan, the restaurant here recognises one's a swan. Gives him a job. He, he sees his potential in that swan. And the swan works at the restaurant as a waiter. He works hard, leaves, works hard, leaves late, whatever. Makes his way to manager. But he can't write, you know, can't do the manager jobs of writing. So they're able to get that spider from Charlotte's Web. She's on a holiday from her university studies. And they fall in love, of course, you know, a tenacious swan and an intelligent spider. 
And I want to get married, but the cat is a different species. <laughs> uh, guys, can't get married, what chance does a spider on a spider? <laughs> So this part is set back, they, they, you know, they get married, they, they live on, they, get, you know, they have a happy life, and they even adopt a crab from the front of the restaurant. <laughs> they scoop him out, take him home, name him Derek. <laughs> Derek would later develop a cocaine addiction. <laughs> he was one of those crabs with a little claw and a big one. <laughs> he always used to do drugs, the cocaine off the little claw to make sure he didn't dehydrate. <laughs> Until one night he had a massive one and did him off his big claw. <laughs> and he died. But we should take solace from the fact that Derek died doing what he loved. Because Derek loved cocaine. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've been a great audience. <laughs> Guys, I do want to thank you again for coming. It has been great. Have you had a good time? Yeah! yeah. Awesome. I, uh, just to let you know what's going on here at Sydney Fringe, so Bedlam Bar, uh, we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, similar